How's it going, everyone? So, here we're back in Replit, and we're going to work with some more JavaScript. Uh, tonight, I wanted to show you all how to make the bubble sort, or a bubble sort function, which uh, I got some notes here in my comments. <coughs> uh, so, bubble sort is a sorting algorithm. It's a really simple, kind of basic sorting al algorithm. It works really well, but the data sets have to be kind of small. And the reason for that is because of the execution time. So you can see up here, we've got the worst case scenario is O n squared, and the best case scenario is O n. What does that mean? So that is what's called big O notation. And in computing, that's used to measure execution time of programs and code, basically. So as you can see in my notes here, O to the N, what it basically uh, means is that the more items you add to sort, the more the time goes up. It, it, it's a linear fashion. So it's like if it takes one millisecond to sort one item, then you add two items or you have two items and it's two milliseconds, three items, it's three, so on and so forth. Um, that's the best case scenario for the bubble sort. The worst case scenario is O n squared, which is more of an exponential kind of growth. Um, so if you have one item, it's one squared, so one millisecond. If it's two items, it's two squared, which is four milliseconds. If you have three, it's three squared, which is then nine. You can already see that this worst case scenario for this, <laughs> it uh, it adds time really quick. So those are just some things to be aware of when you're writing these. Uh, and then down here, I have our pseudocode or algorithm, whatever you want to call it. We're going to use that to kind of frame out and build our function. So let's start. Um, we've defined the function bubble sort. It takes in a uh, parameter that array, and it's going to return the array, but sorted. So the first thing I have here, um, uh, yeah, OK. So if, Sorry, I was debating if I was going to keep that or not, but I kept it in, so we're going to continue to keep it in as uh, to get the length of the array. So we're going to, well, this won't need to change, so we're going to declare constant loop equals array dot length. So constant or const is for constant. That's how you define a variable that won't need to change. and the length of the array will never need to change within this function, so we're just going to keep that constant. Um, so the next thing we want to get, oh, uh, I'll move these comments down. Loop length, and then loop. Loop for loop length. <laughs> so this is going to be our outer for loop. So we're going to say let i equal zero. I is less than loop. I plus 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 plus. There we go. Okay. That's easy enough. So next we want to cycle through array items. We're going to do that by just nesting another for loop. This time using j, so we're going to say let j equals 0, j is less than loop, j plus plus. Okay. So basically, what we've got here is we've got two loops going an outer loop and an inner loop. The reason we're using two loops is because uh, this fun uh, bubble sort, the way it works, is you're going to take uh, two items that are next to each other in our array and you're going to go so we have 14 we have 33 uh, which one's the bigger one okay sorry about that getting back to how the bubble sort works 
So we got we're gonna take two adjacent items out of this array. We got 14 and 33, and we're going to always want the larger number to float upwards. So in this case, 14 is a smaller one; it stays in its place. 33 is a larger one; it stays in its place. So next, we're gonna get 33 and 27. Uh, where 33 is larger than 27, we want it to bubble or float up to the top, so it and 27 are going to switch. And then after that, we're going to have 33 next to 35. Well, those are good. That's going to end there. We're done with that. And then we're going to start the cycle over. And it's just this matter of comparing two and always pushing the larger one up. So, uh... That's where we get our next step, which is to compare adjacent items. And for that, we're going to go if array j, yeah, if array j is greater than array j plus 1. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna want to let temp equal array j, right? So that's the larger of the two. So we're gonna want it to float up. Well, for it to float up, we've also got to have the one next to it float backwards, kind of. So array j equals array j plus one, and then array j plus one is going to equal temp. Okay, so what do we do here? Let's, uh, we're going to use 33 and 27 for this example. Is 33 greater than 27? Yes. So temp equals 33. So we got 33. And then we're going to have array j, which is this index. It's going to eat equal the next index over so that this array j becomes 27 well then we're going to take temp up here and for this index which is that one right there we're going to sign up there 33 so they so they just switch places that's all they're doing we just have to have that third temp variable to hold the uh, first one that's getting overwritten. So we're going to put that all back to our variables. Uh, execute this and ta-da! As you can see we have a sorted array now. Swap. Now, as normal, I like to kind of go through and show you what this code is doing. So we're going to start at the top our console log loop. So when we run this after console logging loop, see that we get a 7. That's the length of the array. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's simple enough. Check that out. <clears throat> we go down here. And for this, we're just going to let it loop through and it's going to console log j. So you can see there would be, <laughs> this is where it starts to add up. But as you can see, this is the uh, one that's being pushed forward. And as we, when we went through the example, just kind of talking about it, as you saw, we had the 14 stay where it's at, then the 33, it replaced with the 27, which is why it's here again. And then the 35, it keeps the 33 in its place, sorry. And then the 35 started moving up. Um, if we want to have some real visual fun with our code, yeah, it's right here is where I want this to be. We're going to console log the entire array as we sort it. And then you can kind of see how this happens. So you see the 33 got bumped up one here. And then it stopped because of that 35. So we move on down. The 35 moves up past the 10. 
and then 35 stops because of the 56. 56 stops because of the 101. This, uh, this array could have been more jumbled, I apologize. <laughs> and then the 101 stops because there's nothing else after it. Um, this is a this is where I could go back and optimize it by looking at this. I can tell you there's a lot of wasted time here <clears throat> because after that 101 has been capped out, we could break out of the loop and go ahead and start it over. And that way, as you can see, there's a lot of these where nothing changes. And that's what you kind of want to avoid is because if nothing's changing, you could have broke out of that and then skipped on down to the part where it is changing. But for all intents and purposes, this is a short little bubble sort algorithm. The, for a lot of small data sets like this one right here, even a little bit bigger, wouldn't have that big of a problem handling it, even with like a wide variety of numbers. I'm just going to hit some random things here. Throw a couple of same digits. See if we do that one hmm. missing after argument with all so I didn't I, there we go there we go see <clears throat> like I said you got the negative 10 12 33 33 45 101 123 123 543 543 I typed a lot of the same numbers didn't I that's interesting but in essence, this is your bubble sort algorithm. That's how it works. Uh, you can see the pros and the cons of it. It's real quick and easy just to crank out, but at the same time, it's not the most optimized sorting algorithm. So it's up to you to find out if that fits what you're trying to do or not. As always, I hope this video helped you out a little bit. If you have any questions about this or other algorithms, leave it down below, and I will help you out to the best of my abilities. As always, thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next video.